Welcome, everyone, to Nerds Night Out. I'm Tom Tormey, and this is my friend and guest, Q. And tonight, we're going to be talking about all things undead. We're going to be counting down our top five favorite zombie movies of all time and talking about, essentially, our chances of living or surviving through the zombie apocalypse. Q, this is the first time I've ever had someone record in the same room with me. Thanks for being here. Cheers, brother. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Q and I have been friends... On again, off again, lovers since the uh, the eighties, the eighties. So that's uh, all right. Not, well, not the on again, off again, lovers part, but friends since the eighties. So it's cool to record with someone in the same room as me. And uh, let's see, you know, this is this is a, a turning stone for nerd sign out. So thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, all right. Uh, so we 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 are huge zombie fans. We always discuss our favorite zombie movies with each other. Uh, what we like, what we don't like. Um, I think the only films that we've really disagreed about was uh, Velocipaster. I mean, I I, <laughs> I I couldn't get through it. I tried my damnedest. I couldn't get through it as as much as I would have liked. I mean, it's a, it's about a priest. Uh, it is what it sounds like. It's a priest that turns into a Velociraptor. Uh, but God help me, uh, z- zombie nuns, uh, ninjas, right? There's 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 been just about. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, since the 60s, since the, really, what, 68? Is that 68 was uh, Night of the Living Dead? There's just that been a... I mean, there's been Night of the Living uh, Lambs, Night of the Living Sheep, I think. there's uh, There was a movie called Night of the Living Deb. There, there's a lot of different zombie movies out there. Some of them... Really picked up in 68, I think. I think George A. Romero really uh, yeah. Set, yeah. set the stage. Uh, White Zombie. White Zombie was uh, what? That's got to be like... Well, the, the namesake of... of one of the better bands out there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And we're uh, talking. Uh, that's that was, that was in the thirties. That's uh, Bella Lugosi, right? But I'm not even sure. Yeah, I think Bella Lugosi, White Zombie. That's how. That's how I picture it. But it was, it was way back. It was, hmm. it was back when they were uh, uh, in competition with talkies. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, we we went to talkies. Uh, that that I know. That one I know. Talkies are what nineteen twenty seven, nineteen twenty eight. The jazz singer. First words ever. In a movie, are wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet by Al Jolson. I, I, I shouldn't know that, but I do. Yeah, yeah. First words ever spoken in a movie. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. That's that. That was my 1920s voice. Yeah. First words. Thank. Oh yeah, yeah. The classic clip. Um, and what? What we? What, I think the first piece of zombie fiction is 1954's uh, Richard Matheson's uh, I Am Legend. Which has probably been made. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I don't know if you would call it zombie per se. I think they're very much like vampire. Well, it. I think it counts as zombie only because of the the time period that it was written. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, as part of today's modern zombie, uh, it, it, it's gone its own. It's it has it's it's branched out in a different direction altogether. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, I t- we're, we're looking at something completely different now, right? And I think that's uh, that is because of Night of the Living Dead that introduced that. Flesh eating zombie yeah, test. Eating, eating people as opposed to eating brains, yeah. So I I can't help but think about it that when we think about our favorite zombie movies, I was I made a list of my top five and I know you made a list of your top five. Um and I was looking over my list and I'm like, geez, half of my list are uh like zomcoms. I, I don't know if that's a word or not. I'm gonna trademark that. They're they're zombie comedies i don't know if i geared myself towards like the uh the darker end that is funny because uh, i agree mm-hmm. uh, a, a disproportionate number of mine are also zombie comedies uh but i also noticed that there's uh, another uh mm-hmm. section out there uh the zom com meaning the the rom-com of zombies the rom-com of zombies. Yeah, uh, that, that movie came out recently, uh, Warm Bodies. Oh, you know what? I, <laughs> I got to tell you, I I read that book. And, and uh, of com, that I thought of, yeah. of rom-com. Yeah, you know, that's fair. That's fair. You're right. But yeah, that, I mean, it does. Uh, but I, I had no idea when I read that book that it was a young adult book. Um, I, I, I really liked it, and I liked the movie. It's like a uh, zombie version of uh, Romeo and Juliet. Minus the tragedy. Uh, it really is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, they didn't put that much effort into that movie at all. No, no, no. Uh, 
Oh, well, but Nicholas Holt and someone else. I don't even know. Uh, I, I recognize some of the faces. I really don't. Yeah, I yeah. Really uh, the actors were there. I thought it was fun. I thought it was uh, entertaining. I, I like the book. Uh, I, I don't want to be one of those people, but, you know, I did like the book better than the movie. That's the difference between me and you. Uh, I never read that book. <laughs> um, I know I, ha- I have it somewhere, or at least had it somewhere. <clears throat> uh, so let, let's, get, let's get into it. Let's start talking about our, our, our top five. And uh, since you are my uh, humble, uh, my not my humble, you're far from humble, uh, you, you are my esteemed guest, co-host. Far from humble. Far from humble. And let's start. What, what is you, what's your number five? My number five is number six. That, that's not numerically. That's, that's not right. a thing. That's right. But uh, my, <laughs> my, I, I have a hard time uh, coming up with a favorite anything. Uh, so the only way I could negotiate with myself in writing this down was I had to come up with six. And even still, if you ask me next week, they're probably going to change. Sure, that's fair. That's but, fair. But this is what I came up with this morning. Uh, that's fair. I mean, this list is how I felt today. 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 Right. And, and I put some thought into it, too. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, number six is Wormwood. Wormwood is a movie that I discovered by accident. I was just going through Amazon horror movies, and it just happened to come up. It was on Prime, so I just happened to watch it for free. And... Uh, I really have to say, I was pleasantly surprised within the first few minutes of the movie. Uh, the shots were strikingly beautiful. I, it, I, it, was, it was very, very well done. Um, extremely over the top with gore. Okay. And the storyline, the writing was, was, was on par with, with uh, some of the, the, the better zombie movies out there today. And the acting was was just fine. I, I did I did really get lost in some of these characters. Uh, for being a, a no name movie, especially, uh, it, it it was filmed in Australia. I think it has everything to do with Australia, oh, which is why we might not have ever heard of it. Uh, it was and it's a, possible. Yeah, it was a, a a a great movie to watch. And as soon as I was done watching it, under the film recommendations, it was a wormwood too. I, I can honestly, I. I I'm a little ashamed that I've never heard of Wormwood at all. Yeah, yeah, I, I was surprised also, especially at how good it was. And, and, I and this was is too. so surprised, and I couldn't wait. I, I watch, I watch a scary movie mm-hmm. uh, once, once every weekend at least. And I remember I saved it. I saved watching Wormwood Part Two. I was, I was that excited. Uh, I, I wanted to feel that delayed gratification. Did it deliver? It did. Wormwood is your. <laughs> so did. Wormwood is your six. It's number six. Number six. It's number six. You can you, okay. I, I can honestly say I've never heard of it, but I did see a. I, I don't know if it counts. It's not in my top five, but I guess I'll give it an honorable mention. Is uh, Cargo, uh, which I think is also uh, Australian, if not New Zealand. Please God, you know. Um, I don't know if that's if you're offended. Sorry, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, they, they really do that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you pull a kiwi and Aussie or, or vice versa. Ooh. Oh, you're gonna have a bad time. I it, might. I am sorry. That's my. This is my. This is the best Australian accent you could get from me. It's not bad. Oh, thanks. From, from a New Yorker, it's not bad. yeah. For a New Yorker, not bad at all, right? Uh, it's just they would probably hear go. That's not even close. That's not even close to. Oh my God, I'm not. All right, but I'm losing it. I don't know it's becoming. Uh, everything becomes an Irish accent after a while. Uh, yeah, I cargo. I think was also. Uh, Oh my God! I'm drawing a blank. He played uh, Agent Ross in the uh, oh, he, and he was in uh, the uh, MCU. He was in Sherlock as Holmes, and I'm drawing a blank on his name. But it, that was another good one. I have to say that I've never seen Cargo. Yeah, I think I think it's a Netflix. I'm not sure if it's Netflix. I'll, I'll go with uh, you know I I had a trouble I had trouble with uh, my top five as well. So I had a tie for my top five. Both of them. Um, do, all right, so we agreed that Zomcom is not uh, so zombie comedies. Both of them were zombie economies, uh, comedies. I had Shaun of the Dead and Fido. Uh, Fido, uh, Shaun of the Dead, I think everybody kind of knows Shaun of the Dead. Uh, it's it's kind of seeped its way into pop culture almost as much as Night of the Living Dead. Oh, definitely plays tribute to, to George. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, he liked the movie so much that he put uh, Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg in Land of the Dead as zombies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was a big fan, big, uh, but I, I think I, I even saw a 
Phineas and Ferb episode that had uh, Simon Pegg and a uh, guy who plays Ed, who I'm drawing a blank on, uh, in uh, in the episode as they're showing other dead characters. So you know, you know, it's got to make its way into pop culture if Disney is including them in a cartoon. But I, I put both of them as my uh, top, my 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 number five. They're tied. Uh, Billy Connolly is the star of Fido. He is Fido. It's like a uh, um, a world in which they've kind of learned how to domesticate zombies and uh, just picture a Norman Rockwell painting, but with zombies. And uh, it's a pretty solid film. Uh, it, it's a little jarring to see. I, if you know Billy Connolly, he's, um, he's uh, I think, uh, uh, he's used to seeing him with, like, mustache. You know what I like about Land of the Dead? Uh, he, he had neither. Is that, little, is it big it, it was just a jarring the, to see him. Uh, I actually recognize him. Yes, all, so. attendant oh, that yes, starts. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Because they can now think. Is, yes. Is, that's, uh, that's the first. Is uh, short of the dead. Uh, zombie uh, genre. And Fido. Can I do that? Am I allowed to do that? We're kind of making our own rules here. So I have a tie for five. Just tie for five. Expert on zombies. Both of them. Because that's fair. I really do love zombies. And I do. Oh, I mean. By definition, I am an expert. I know more than a lay person. But to me, that was my first experience with a zombie that can think, rationalize, use tools. Uh, he grabbed the gun from the mm -hmm. one guy. He was able to learn how to use it. Right. Uh, he was able to uh, to direct the other zombies, even though they were brainless and mindless. He was able to actually to point them in the in the in the direction to attack uh, the guy with the meat cleaver to tear down the wall. And yeah, 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 uh, I, I, yeah. I, it was pretty clever. I, 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 I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. And as much as I say I'm a George A. Romero fan, I didn't see. Um, Diary of the Dead, or I, I think there were like two more follow-ups. I think there's probably like seven films in that whole of the Dead series, and uh, Land is kind of where I, I tapped out. I think there was Diary of the Dead. It was kind of like a first-person zombie film, mm, and maybe one more. I feel like there was one more. They weren't all home runs. No, but, no. But as as far as being a, a fan, uh, that you're, you're not going to miss out. I mean, uh, you're going to enjoy watching. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 it, it's an enjoyable watch. Each one's not as good as the next. Uh, you you might like uh, a Return of the Living Dead for different reasons. Yeah, uh, that that was a nice, that was a big one. That, one that, that was the, more successful. I think I think Return is the franchise that gave us the brains. Yes, yeah, that was the franchise yeah. that 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 changed it from eating flesh to eating brains. Right, and uh, that also is the franchise that made the better zombie Michael Jackson. I, I was I wasn't aware that there was a competition. Who wait, who has the other zombie Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson, yeah, the yeah. Thriller. He was a terrible zombie. Oh yes, yeah. He was a terrible zombie. Yeah, uh, he scared was, the crap out of my friend Kenny when he was a kid when he watched that. Uh, all little kids are afraid of of, yeah. of, of monsters and stuff. Ran and the hell out of the house. Their makeup was good in that video. Yeah. And everything and ah, uh, yeah. Vincent Price okay. with the uh, with the with the the. the the slit pupils and everything yes. and yes. at the last second. It, it was it was scary to little kids. I was a little, little kid at the time, but oh. once I became a tween, I realized mm. it, it's it's kind it's kind of whack. You tweened, yeah, yeah. You got used, to, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Uh, but there was a Michael Jackson scene in the uh, in I, the end of Return of the Living Dead. They uh, the the massive zombies were killed by being electrocuted in a puddle. Okay, and Michael Jackson was one of the zombies. Uh, doing doing the the electric man. Remember the eighties dance? Dun, 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 dun. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah sure. We just kind of shake. Uh, I I get that's you know that that reminds me of the scene from the two thousand and four remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead. Is that two thousand four? I can't remember. It but, was in the two thousand. Yeah, uh, and where they were shooting off the uh, the roof of the mall, and they were yes. like, "Is that Burt Reynolds? Is that uh, Rosie O'Donnell?" Uh, that that was a pretty cool scene. Uh, uh, it, I think that was a star-studded cast too, though. It? I was, I, and as a Bruce Willis. Was, was no, Bruce, was it Bruce? Bruce was in one of the yeah. Romero movies. Is that yeah? Is that true? I yeah, don't know. I can't think of so many now that that uh, they're kind of they're kind of mixed in together. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. He was, he 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 took on a lot of roles that uh, paid bills. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of with the Bruce Willis? I'm thinking of uh, oh, Planet Terror. Planet Bruce, Terra. I think Bruce Willis was in Planet Terra. Oh, this, is that the yeah. Tarantino? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert Rodriguez movies. I, I, I actually yeah. I, I skipped out on those. The little the Grindhouse ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definite honor, honorable mention. Uh, I, I, you know, Schwarzenegger has a zombie movie called Maggie. I know. It's it's not it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's it's certainly like more a uh, 
um, uh, art piece kind of zombie movie, if that's fair to say. I like I remember watching the the trailer to it, and I remember passing on. Yeah, 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 you didn't, you didn't, you didn't miss much. Yeah, it, uh, it didn't give zombie vibes. It gave. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember what vibes it gave. Well, it, it is, it is, uh, it is an interesting genre. Uh, because, uh, like I said, we were saying before, with Richard Matheson's "I Am Legend," kind of really introduced the apocalyptic, uh, you know, zombie esque movies, and then Romero brings it big time. I, you know, the funny thing is, uh, the crazy thing about the Romero "Night of the Living Dead" is that he 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 that movie was instantly in the public domain because they screwed up the copyright. It, like it was originally called like Light, I, I can't remember. It was "Night of the Flesh Eaters" or something like that which they had trademarked. And then when they went to print, they called it Night of the Living Dead, but they never trademarked it. So they, it instantly went into the public domain. Anyone, like we, you and I can make our own Night of the Living Dead movie, as that's, we should, as it. we should. You are great. I love these wonderful facts. But yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you you have a, uh, you told me something about the, the word zombie itself uh, with, with trademarks. Oh, uh, for a, a short period of time, M Marvel... Boy, Marvel since its it, Marvel Comics since its inception had always prided itself, uh, not publicly but professionally, or or you know so definitely as a publisher, trying to trademark just about anything it could get its hands on in terms of making money. That's why they ended up with the uh, Captain Marvel moniker. But in the 1970s, I think 72, they uh, defied the. Uh, comics code and kind of wanted to publish their own zombie book, which they did as a magazine, not a comic to circumvent that. But they tried to, and successfully for some God knows, I don't know what the hell was going on in the patent office, but they gave Marvel the word, the, the trademark on the word zombie for, and boy, they held on to it to, for 30 years about it. I think they lost it in the 1990s, mid 1990s. I remember the uh, the old timey zombie movies was spelled Z O M B I. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the like I think it was that that was the yeah, that Italian one, right? Is, am I am I losing my mind? Uh, zombie then it's zombie two. Zombie two. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think don't that, think it was a, a, was that the one with the shark? There might be a relation between zombie and zombie two. I mean, you can you can circumvent those things by yeah. spelling it differently phonetically. It's the same. I think that, like, there was a Godzilla movie once called Godzilla versus Destroyer, but they realized Destroyer was so just such a common word they couldn't trademark it. So, uh, uh, in spelling, they called Destroy A uh, with an A H. But in, in the movie, very clearly Destroyer. But uh, for promotional purposes, it's uh Destroy A. Uh. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know how the hell they got the the copyright to zombie. Was, even then, I mean, by the nineteen seventies, it was a common word. I don't know how. I mean, they must have paid that. Patent clerk off something nice, and they made it a, a magazine, not, not a yeah, comic? yeah, because uh, the comic code, uh, which had been in place probably since uh, the, the in nineteen fifty four or thereabout, uh, had prohibited lots of weird things like undead characters. Uh, so, like, uh, they, you couldn't have a vampire as a leading character. So that's why Morbius is the living vampire to to circumvent the undead thing. Or uh, you had weird laws like you know bad guys can never win, so. In the late seventies, Joker got his own series, and at the end of every issue, he was arrested. They, you just couldn't have the bad guys winning. Uh, I, I understand what you're saying with that, but what what I'm kind of hung up on is the fact that it wasn't a comic. The fact that it was a magazine. They had different articles and stuff. Uh, no, no, it, it was more like the format of it, uh, the size of it. Uh, they would get around certain laws. Um, uh, the, the, I think the best example of that is the X Men toys. In the 90s, I believe, tried to circumvent uh, trade laws by saying, "Well, they're not they're not dolls because they're not they're not human. Uh, they're not, they're mutants. They're not humans, so they they have to be taxed differently." Which really, if you think about it, goes against pretty much the entire concept of what the X Men should be like. Th their efforts to belong, and and Marvel like, no, they don't belong. They don't belong. Not for tax purposes. They don't belong. Uh, so they, 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 we, laws, uh, I, I wish I knew more about these kind of patent laws because I do find them fascinating, but uh, it, it's peculiar. The zombie one really sticks out at me because, it, I mean, Romero released, what, uh, Night of the Living Dead? Uh, and I do, I, I always like, I, I, and it may be because of copywriting, because Z Marvel had a copyright on for so long, but I do like how in zombie movies, they will try anything, anything. To not call them zombies, like oh no, their their skin 
people or they something. Did. They did. They They'll did. call them like the craziest things, yeah, right? Yeah, just because yeah. I'm not sure if it was a copyright law issue or they're just trying to be creative. I, I know Walking Dead. It seems to be tradition now. Uh, now, now they're calling them biters, right? Right, walkers. gamblers, yeah. walkers. Well, walkers is like the uh, hungry. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, or you have movies like Twenty Eight Days Later, Twenty Eight Weeks Later, and I think they're making a Twenty Eight Years Later. Years later. Uh, they're they they're trying to they just. I don't think they, I, I don't think they're even referred to as zombies at all. I don't think they are. They're infected. They infected the rage virus. Thank you. My list. Oh, oh, all right. Well, let's let's. Where are we? I I lost track completely. Are we at number four? Uh, I think. Or, or, yeah, I did number six. I did number five. All right, so I'll go with my number five. Right? Is that fair? You already did your number five. You did. You you had you had a tie for number five. Oh yes, yes. Can I go to my number four then? Go ahead. All right. My number four is, I think, in Norwegian. I I have to learn geography. I should know geography. I, and if you're in Australia, New Zealand. Or Sweden, I don't. Did I just say Sweden? Or I don't know what I just said. But or Norway, Norway. If you're Norwegian, I apologize. But uh, Dead Snow, Dead Snow. Um, I think Dead Snow came, uh, what was maybe 2006 or thereabout, and it was this great movie. Uh, again, another kind of dark comedy one uh, about these skiers who come across uh, hidden Nazi gold and. Uh, in 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 taking the gold, these Nazis oh, yeah, come yeah. back. Their, their 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 version of Spring Break, Easter Break. Yeah, like that. right, yeah, yeah. right. Their version, the Norwegian yeah. version, or what? Well, do, does Norway? Yeah, yeah. Have a Spring Break. A uh, snow break. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it was pretty cool. It was so weird, and and you know what? I got to tell you, I, sh I probably should. I, I I almost I was going back and forth. I'm like, do I put Dead Snow two? Uh, red versus dead. Do I put that higher? Because I really did. Like, I think I think it, it just went like, this is absurd. Let's, let's just lean into the absurdity. And I, I really enjoyed it. And in that movie, uh, a uh, Soviet army, which had also somehow been buried and zombified. I can't remember the details. And no, 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 that, that's all. That, that's pretty much all you need to know. I mean, whatever I say, it doesn't make it okay. From the dead. Yeah. Right. Right. Which which doesn't make sense. No, I, I'm okay with that. Dead. Yeah. Which means they would be frozen. I, I do. They, they, they yeah. Would, unless they're alive, they would be frozen. You hear? Yeah. So all you Walt Disney fans, he's not coming back. Uh, he's he's frozen. He's done. His cells are mush. You've had the thawed meat. You know it's not the same. That that's part of my plan with the zombie apocalypse. It, it depends on on what kind of outbreak it is. If they're the kind that, that rise back from the dead, then all you have to do is go somewhere cold for a couple of years. There's a great chapter in uh, World War Z about that. Um, and World War Z is probably by Max Brooks, probably my favorite piece of zombie fiction. I've read it more than any other book, including the Bible. Is that Mel Brooks's kid right there? Yeah, it's Mel Brooks's kid, yeah. Uh, he's written a couple of books, but uh, you know, he also has uh, some companion books to it as well zombie survival guide and uh recorded attacks which is kind of like a um more like a promotional piece graphic novel but uh in it they they people like well it's cold zombies get slower into cold and eventually they freeze and they all go up north but they also realize that they can't survive up there either and it it gets convoluted like like no one knows how to pack they're packing like nintendo game cubes you know they're not really they don't know how to they're not survivalists per se just have to find a can uh, well, that's you just have to find. You just go go to a house uh, that 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 is abandoned, and and you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I I think that's part of it. They also, I think, in the chapter, uh, do as they always do. They resort to cannibalism, uh, <laughs> to survive. So survive the zombie apocalypse. Yep, <laughs> to survive, people eating people, they eat people. Uh, so it's it's full circle. It's like the circle of life, uh, except with cannibalism. Uh, but yeah, Dead Snow is is definitely up there. It's it's so stupid and fun. It's a lot of fun. That it's really over the top too. Oh with, yeah, with the blood and the violence, and it's so unnecessary. Some of the amounts of of, of blood that's that's spilled, like the scene where he's trying to give uh, chest compressions. <laughs> that uh, that is the scene. Yeah, it just <laughs> plows right through the guy's chest. I I I remember talking about that scene like like two or three days after I saw the movie yeah. to people that have. 
no idea yeah. that this movie even exists. Uh, of course, we no neglected to mention it. That at this point, he has a zombie arm because he had lost his arm and they reattached a zombie arm to him, which gives him incredible strength. Uh, and it's just, there's nothing I could say. Like, there's, there's, I could explain. I'm sure the movie does. I'm sure I've watched it multiple times and I'm sure the movie tries to explain why these things happen, but no one can. Well, the no. humor is he's trying to save a guy and in his attempt to save the guy, his chest compressions just completely demolish this guy <laughs> yeah. and a Kill Bill amount of blood is just spraying out yeah. of this guy's everything. Everything. Yeah, that's it's fair. It's so over the top that it you, it's just hilarious. Yeah, it, it and that, that's the that's the yeah, as I as I start to go down my list, as I start to get towards my like three, two, and one, um, the gore starts taking a back seat to the story. And th- 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 there, I guess there are two kinds of people out there with the zombie books, uh, zombie books, zombie movies. That do you do you want like the Tom Savini? I think Tom Savini even made his own version of Night of the Living Dead in uh, the nineties with uh, like Tony Todd and. Uh, but I mean, he and he's known for just gore, you know, just gore or just just blood everywhere. And I, I guess you have to consider what do you, what do you like more? Do you like the how would I survive this or would I survive this? Or do you like the uh, like jets of blood squirting from a paper cut? I think they can all potentially be number one. They they you mean like there's a, there's a place for them? I I think that. Uh, None of this will get discounted out. I think if if it's done well enough, yeah, that's fair. All of, if you're a fan of zombies, you have to be a fan of all of the above. You can't be a fan of zombies and not be a fan of some of the tropes that come along with it. You can't be a fan of zombies and not be a fan of the apocalypse. Yeah, right, um, right, okay. Uh, have Have you ever considered your chances? Uh, I know you're a bow hunter. Uh, have you considered your chances of surviving the apocalypse? Absolutely depends on the type of zombie there is. If we have an outbreak and everyone gets infected, I can't say that that's going to, you know, I, I can, I can hold my own because if it's airborne or whatever, it depends on, on the type of outbreak it is. If they're the, uh, <clears throat> night of the living dead kind where they come back from the dead. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I can survive that just fine. Uh, with me- melee weapons and, uh, me- melee as in like uh, uh, a lead pipe. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, that's fine. Yeah. It, it depends on, on the type of zombie. If we're talking about uh, uh, the, the fast running zombies or the world war Z type zombies. Oh yeah. I don't, you know, really that that's uh, that, I don't think anything is going to, going to survive a world war Z type zombie. Yeah. But, by the way, I, uh, which is my least favorite type of zombie. Okay. I, I, and just so you know, too, and to the books credit, the film, and the and uh, man, it's just the second time I'm doing this where I'm like, oh, the book is better than the movie. But uh, it, it is. It is. I don't care. I don't care. It is better than the movie. Uh, the movie is t- takes tiny little pieces, but really, like, y- you could have taken a chapter out of World War Z, and that chapter alone would have made an excellent movie. The movie itself, in the in the book, there are no fast zombies. Mm. Uh, and the film, they're not, they're, they're almost like what, like, like, ho- like a swarm I, I of insects. I tell you exactly what I hate about that movie, and it's, it's exactly what you're saying. Um, it's hive mind, yeah, it's, it's a hive the fact mind that they have hive mind. It's the fact that they, uh, they, they have this swarm type thing where they, where they climb on each other right. without, without any kind of uh, a speaking beforehand. They don't, they don't, they don't huddle together and say, This is what we're gonna do. They just they just go forward and and they, the the ones at the bottom will sacrifice themselves and they'll go over any hurdle, mm-hmm. uh, go get uh, get into any building, and they, they they run fast as hell. It's it's as if they can sprint, uh, forever. Yeah. Uh. And right. And, and and they don't seem to need to eat either, in the movie. Uh, it seems they they only just want to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and in the movie, also, what I noticed that I didn't like was they didn't attack the sick, the terminally ill. Not in the book either, right? Which, just which in itself is a weakness. Yeah, like, I mean, you, I mean, I mean, you could just you could just pack a a, 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 a hospital full of of uh, of sick kids, okay, and and just give them like crazy machine guns and just 
shoot in every direction. They're, they're not going to attack. They're not going to attack the place because it doesn't smell like healthy humans. Yeah, I, I did find that like to be peculiar. Like, uh, oh, they're, they're not going after people who are terminally ill. Well, they'll survive. Really? Like, but for how long? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like the world is theirs. Just, just long enough to <laughs> kill them all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God, I'm. They're not attacking me. And you know, five days later, uh, you succumb anyway. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, the movie itself. Uh, I'm not sure who that movie was made for. I, I, from what I remember, the entire third act was redone. Like where they went from, they were globe hopping, and then uh, they ended up in the WHO labs, and it became a commercial for Pepsi. I don't know if you remember that at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he literally cracks open a can. He's like, ah. The choice, you know, what is the choice of a new generation or something? It just became so absurd. That seems from Wayne's world. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would never shell out corporate sponsorships and all that. All that's pretty much exactly what it felt like. The apocalypse sponsored well, by Pepsi. The thing is, uh, when it comes to horror movies, um, uh, I can choose a horror movie generally by looking at who's in it, and if there's a name I even recognize, generally it's going to be an on par or or a little bit above average in the horror movie tr uh genre yeah if it has a celebrity that i recognize now this one had brad pitt had brad pitt yeah as far as i'm concerned very respectable i i think he uh there's not too many movies that he's done that i don't really enjoy that's fair that's yeah. fair he, he is cool yeah. i i enjoy it and, and i was really disappointed as it you is. should have been yeah. yeah it was disappointing as a fan of the book i I have I have a, co a signed copy by Max Brooks, uh, but it, it was disappointing. I waited for it for a while because that that was in production hell I, uh, for a long time, and I think it's Brad Pitt's production studio Plan B, uh, which also is right. That's something else, isn't it? But um, he, he he made the movie. I, I spent millions upon millions. And the funny thing is, you don't with a zombie movie. I I, I you just don't need to, to do that. You don't need to dump millions upon millions of dollars into a zombie movie it looked like it was a it, it was a very expensive production yeah it looked like it was a cgi yeah, yeah. you know just disaster but you don't need for a zombie movie no no i mean you, you need to you know some corn syrup and uh uh some slow moving zombies and, and that would have been enough uh, some of the, the the better movies i've seen were were nothing more than just uh chocolate syrup yeah, you can't go wrong. Yeah, Chuck and Sierra. Well, I, I, and, and, I think it's psycho. And someone will put a steak under their T-shirt. Oh yes, slit in the shirt so you can see the the meat sticking out. It's really low budget. And, and, and you know that sometimes the low budget part is what makes it more fun. Yeah, I, I uh, except Velocipaps, Pastor. I couldn't. I, that, uh, that was a wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe Tom. If you're a zombie aficionado, if you're a zombie fan, yeah, you are going to enjoy. Velocipaster. Okay. Now available <laughs> on it. I don't know. Free. It's got to be for free. Right. Well, my number four. Okay. You just said your number four. My I number did. four is Shaun of the Dead. Oh, uh, you know what? You can't go wrong with Shaun of the Dead. I really, you really can't. He, uh, he gives his props back to George A. Romero. Yep. Uh, and a lot of other of the of the classic zombie. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, no, yeah. I, I, the, 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 the kind of things you're expecting to see. In a zombie movie, in in, in, in even though uh, what Edgar Wright wrote and directed, I believe, uh, he, he, it still has the charm of a George A. Romero zombie movie. It, it's got a lot in that. It, it's not just the charm of, the, of a George A. Romero movie. It's got it's got funny scenes, mm -hmm. uh, funny. I, what I should actually be more specific. It's got funny zombie killing scenes. It's got gory zombie killing scenes. It's even got a really sad zombie killing scene i'm not gonna when, kill me mom exactly that's the one i mean yeah. i mean uh th there are there are a lot of emotions going on in that movie it's 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 a comedy uh and and of course the comedy revolves around uh dry english wit yeah uh and and they're being polite they, they are <laughs> as, polite as they're killing all of these all of these yeah. zombies um and uh, God, the english have gone to war with just about every country on the planet but god help you you're polite you're polite about it. They pull up their pinky when they, when they said, Yeah, I, I, and we appreciate it. 
We appreciate it. I I I, I enjoy it. I little cameo by Coldplay's whatever the hell his name is, Martin something. He was in that movie for about a second as a zombie, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll point it out to you. Uh, I'll send you the screenshot. Um, but I, I liked it, you know. And you know what? Uh, like like a Romero movie, it's got its social commentary. Um, essentially, you know, if you remember uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead and the the mall and the social commentary, like we're all zombies already. If you remember the kind of the opening scenes of Shaun of the Dead of everybody shuffling through their life uh, with zero interaction, just meandering about. Oh, that that opening scene you're talking about. Yeah, that's that's probably my favorite opening scene to any movie ever. Yeah, the, the first one when he goes to the market. Right. And, and uh, you know, it, it's it's just him not paying attention to his surroundings. And, and then the, the yeah. second scene yeah, yeah. is the exact same thing in zombie form. And it's got to be in real time, bro. Yeah, it, uh, it, I think it was it one continuous it, shot. It, yeah. Side by side, it has to yeah. be in real time. It's done so beautifully. And I was just so glad because a lot of times I didn't see it in the theater. So a lot of times no. when, you, when I watch a movie at home, I don't really pay attention to the first few few minutes of the movie. I'm sitting down. I'm getting comfortable. I'll get a, I'll get a, a drink of water or something. And I'm so glad I was able to pick up on that right off the bat. And it caught my attention for the entire rest of the movie. That opening scene was brilliant. It was. And I can't imagine how hard it must have been to to record it like that either. Yeah, no. Because I, it was it was it, it was one long continuous shot. Each it was two shots, by the way. The zombie shot and then and then the, right, uh, right. the uh the the, the, real the parallel shot. of the you know, the before and after right. kind of yeah. But it was one long continuous shot, and it I, really did have to be a challenge. That's one of my favorite. I, I, I'm no cinematography expert, but I do love that one continuous shot, kind of like the uh, opening scene of Goodfellas, or not, maybe not the opening scene, but where he's going through the restaurant uh, and the camera's following him. I love that kind of stuff. It's, right. I mean, because just one one thing goes awry, and you, you the whole thing is shot to hell. Uh, I think there was a great shot like that in the movie 1917. And uh, he's it's essentially a, a soldier, British soldier running across the oh battlefield and he gets knocked down, but he wasn't supposed to be knocked yes. down. But they're like, screw it, man. We're filming. We got to keep going. Uh, so I, I just imagine the level and, and that kind of artistry in a zombie movie is not something you really see a lot of. So it was it was a deserving. It's really novel. Yeah. Yeah. Really that, that's novel. your four. That's number four. Yes. OK. So uh, number three. My number three, my number three is the girl with all the gifts. We were just talking about England. Uh, we're, we're talking about it. Movie. Great movie. Great movie. I, I think it was originally called the the girl who brings the gifts or something like that. Um, and then they changed it for the movie and then they changed it for the book, too, because oh, they're like, oh, I guess I guess they liked it better. Uh, the girl brings the gifts. With, uh, so the girl with all the gifts is about, uh, you know, it's 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 very much. uh in the same vein of I am legend in that the zombies at the end are now the new class of people. And these are intelligent. Alert. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, if you didn't see when I think it came out in 2016, possibly. So you had like nine years to see it. I don't know. I can't do math, but you had eight years to see it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I I, that's what I liked about I Am Legend, where you kind of realize that uh, the doctor, uh, whether it's like Charlton Heston or Vincent Price or Will Smith, whoever was playing in the movie, you realize that they're like the bad guy. They're the ones experimenting on this new class of people. And the girl with all the gifts really goes down that same route. Plus, it's got Glenn Close in it, and she's like evil, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, she is evil. Yeah. Well, well she's good for humans. Uh, right, right. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess that's a that's a cool yeah. kind of perspective but the thing. Fact that, but the fact that she's pro-human makes her inherently evil to this. Yes. The new, the new Glenn Close is pro-human. Yeah. She is a fan of the human race from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, also, another movie that was beautifully shot. Yes, there, it was. There are so many scenes in there that, that uh, are, are really uh, just, just breathtaking uh, with the cinematography. Um, yeah. The, the, uh, the lighting was done really well it, it really it was this is one of the few movies that i i really sat back and and really appreciated uh the, the artistry in front mm. of me on top of the the, the wonderful storyline uh because it, it is it 
is at the time anyway was a more unique storyline because yeah, it was yeah. a fungus. That's uh, now, now fungus right. has become mainstream because yes. of uh, this this TV show, The Last of Us. The Last of Us, right? Yeah. And now, now fungus is everyone saying, "Oh, naturally it would be a fungus." I, I do. I do like when the, the Last of Us came out. Um, just I mean, uh, articles now all of a sudden coming out like fungus is going to kill us all. I, I mean, it's so weird that they would try and exploit the fear no. at, right right you know perfect timing the last of us came out now we're all gonna die by fungus mm-hmm. um and i i played enough mario games to know that that's not true <laughs> i know that fungus would make me stronger and give me an extra life so. yeah it didn't make my top five but that was going to be an honorable mention that's fair it really was beautiful yeah it, it, was, it was beautiful on top of being really gory really bloody uh the 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 I think the girl in the in the movie, uh, the the main yeah. main character, uh, who, who none of us can recall at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Uh, but but she was just full of blood for for easily three quarters of the movie. Yeah, uh, from, yeah. From from the jawline down. I I do like the like the feral zombie children. They were they were super creepy. Yeah, they were creepy. I mean, children are inherently creepy. I think that's what horror movies have taught us. Uh, you know, children singing one, two, Freddy. You know. It's all it takes. The children singing or children just existing. Yeah. They're generally creepy. F- feral children existing amongst themselves. Yeah. 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 F- feral zombie children. I mean, there's really no difference between children and zombies anyway. Uh, so what, what do you have as your number three? My number three is Train to Busan. Oh, okay. So I, I will, I will spoil alert and say that that is my number two. So we're, we're, we're getting on track uh uh-huh. see what i did it was a train pun what'd you do i i made a train pun i said we're getting on track because it was train to busan are we gonna for, we're gonna forget that i get puns we're gonna we're gonna forget that train to busan has a sequel right i mean because i i didn't care for it peninsula did you see it i turned it off yeah it, it's it's a, a sequel in name only i think they tried to kind of i think they thought they had a franchise on their hands and were like we could just call anything train to busan and then put something on it and yeah. uh it, it was very loosely connected and and i i didn't enjoy the sequel at all it, it, considering how much the original blew me away i turned it off and that says a lot for me because i sit through a lot yes you do you do <laughs> I really do um there, there are some tv shows that i'll finally turn off i i, I, I had to stop watching walking dead uh because um, I, I can't, I can't, I can't donate an entire season, hoping that the last two episodes are going to redeem it. That's yeah. That's, we're, we're talking about like nine hours of my life. Uh, you know? And you, you um, I saw your last cardiology report, and you do not, <laughs> you do not, you do not have that kind of time to waste. Let me tell you, yeah, do not. So for me to turn off a movie, uh-huh. I would stick. It's got to, it's got to be substantial. You know, yeah. a, a TV show. I, I I'll stick through a few episodes, uh, but I, I can't I can't stay the whole entire time. Uh, so I had to turn off the last season of, of Walking Dead. Uh, I might pick it up next season. I tried. It seems to go season by season. Seems like every season has its own small storyline. Yeah, that's uh, fair. They introduce new characters. Some are some are gone. I'll pick it up when it comes back and, and I'll give it another shot. I, I haven't abandoned it altogether. Uh, but I I. I sat through uh, wrestlers versus zombies. You did. Uh, we we were talking about yeah. that a while back. And uh, if you could sit through wrestler v- wrestlers versus zombies, and that's like Matt Hardy, Roddy Piper, God knows who else. Oh, Roddy uh, Piper had Kurt it. Angle, bro. Kurt Angle. Well, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. Jeez. Um, I listen. You know, great wrestlers. He gets scalped. He gets scalped. He gets scalped. Uh, I actually have never seen. I've seen the box of it. It looked like a two-year-old had, was learning how to use Photoshop to make the the art for that. Uh, it, it, I mean, it. I, I'm not. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I, I do. I do. I mean, why else do the hell do they have covers? You know what I mean? Like, what am I supposed to do? We, we absolutely do judge books by their covers. Yeah, right. And I, I'll, I'll judge uh, VH. Oh God, VHS. I'll judge a DVD or something by its cover too. You read the back cover. Oh, I do. I mean, we read the cover. Yeah. We look at the picture. How, how do you not? Ju- I still to this. I remember that as a child going into a video store called Casos, Casios, and the box for Ghoulies was there, and it was a tiny little green thing coming out of a toilet. Uh, 
toilet, yeah. turlet. I mean, as they say from Brooklyn, turlet. And I was like, oh my god, that looks so scary. So I'm I, I spent thirty something years and uh, probably more, and I still remember that. Yeah, yeah, little pointy teeth and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. So uh, it's fair. And and if I saw when I saw the box to uh, wrestling zombies, uh, is that right? Wrestling zombies, right? Am I saying right? The, the zombies aren't wrestlers. What's the what's the movie called? Am I saying it's wrestlers versus zombies? Oh, wrestlers. I'm sorry. Pro wrestlers. Oh yes, right. Zombies. We want to make sure they understand it's not like Greco Roman yeah. style <laughs> wrestling. We want to make that distinction. Right. All right, so uh, so that's my number two. My number two is Train to Busan. It, it pulled at the heartstrings. Um, it was atmospheric. You know, you had the I wouldn't say the entirety, but the the entirety of the core plot on a moving train, which uh, is really the antithesis of what you're used to seeing in a zombie. I, I guess Dawn of the Dead kind of trapped us in a mall, so we, we accept that it, it's cool. You know, I like I like the I like the concept like the, the rest of the world is going to hell, but we're following these people. Let's invest in these people. And I love that you brought it back to this again. I, at the beginning of the movie, we're on the train, and the little girl looks out of the train, and the first we see of any kind of outbreak is the little girl seeing the guy jump on top of, yeah. of, uh, of another guy. So it looks like there's an outbreak outside the train. So you first feel kind of safe. Yeah. You're right. encapsulated. You're safe. But then... Not very long after that scene, that safeness being encapsulated becomes claustrophobic. And I love yeah, that's I right. love the claustrophobic feel of the movie. And that follows you for almost the entire movie. It, it, every car is... Yeah, you're right. You know, I hadn't yeah. really thought about it like that. That's yeah. a, every, every, as the movie passes, the yeah. train even itself is getting smaller yeah. and smaller for them. We feel safe at first because we're in it. And then... Right. Oof. And then you then you knee deep in it. Yeah, yeah, well, the, the wonderful movie. Yeah, oh, wonderful true, movie. true. Can't go wrong. I, if you haven't, I, I inherently Hollywood is going to take that and remake it. I know there were plans uh, pre COVID, but I don't know if they've ever resurfaced uh, to have a movie called Last Train to New York. Uh, I heard of that. Yes. Yeah, and it, I, was, it wasn't through you. I, I, I did hear of that though. Yeah, and no, I, well, I mean, it, it probably that. was through me. All good things. Go through me, <laughs> all good things, uh, but um, you might not remember it. I can't imagine Hollywood actually doing a better job. No, no, that, that's so that that drives me nuts. That drives me nuts. That that Hollywood sees a South Korean movie or a British movie, and, Breck. and like Breck is another one that, that Hollywood tried. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. We we have to do it better. Like no, you don't. No, you. It's good. It's good. Leave it as is. I I think Godzilla minus one. Just dub it in Ray Romano's voice. If you want to touch it, you know there's zombies. <laughs> there's zombies everywhere. Uh, that was that's my regular one. It was a uh, good one. Thanks, <laughs> uh, the, the, yeah, it's it's a little absurd. I, I think Godzilla minus one showed us. I, I think it is now the highest grossing foreign film in American history, and uh, by the way, made for fifteen million, which is like less than a, a Super Bowl commercial, and it it it, it made bank. It, it was great and. Um, I, I think it's gonna make uh, Godzilla Kong look stupid just by comparison, uh, and it already does just based on the previews. But uh, they don't they don't need to remake everything. Train to Busan is beautiful the way it was. That I don't, I don't think we need to touch it any more than we have. I agree. All right, uh, are we? Uh, you're up to your number two because uh, my number two was Train to Busan. Nice. And my number two is the 28 day franchise. 28 oh, days and 28 weeks later. That is that is cool. Yeah, that is cool. It's got to be both of them. I, I can't choose. I, I can't choose just one. Um, it was. No. It, it wasn't my introduction to running zombies, but oh man, did they make that whole outbreak even more scary? I think uh -huh. the Twenty Eight franchise was uh, was a, a form of rabies, right? Uh, yeah, I look. I, I think they were experimenting on monkeys, right? And right. then uh, like some kind of eco warriors, the, yeah, the tried to, yeah, and, yeah. And then it, it spread instantly from there. The so rage nice. virus, uh, which I, I guess you know, that's the one thing you you gotta you gotta applaud about zombie films themselves. Uh, whether it's Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead or or Twenty Eight Days Later, that or you know I could keep going on, but they all kind of tap into some kind of like social uh, construct, like they like they. That rage, that anger, uh, 
that we as a society feel like 28 days later weaponized. What I liked about 28 days was they were alive. Oh yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. They're not, they're not undead. They're not undead. Yeah. Yeah. They just have a, a crazy form of rabies. So, I mean, they do die, right? Like they do die. You, you can shoot them in the chest. No, but I mean, I think that, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 They, they die on their own. Well, you know, actually that, that's, that's a funny thing. Cause most zombie movies are, or yeah, anything is hit in the, head. the head, Yeah, which has got to be such a weird, uh, like, even if you, I, I was talking about like what I would do to survive a zombie apocalypse and much of what I would do to survive would mean like ho holding up somewhere and like staying away from everything because I know out in the real world uh, my skills would make get me about like three blocks I I'm not going far uh, but I would imagine even the most skilled uh, soldier for example they're probably taught. I, I I think this is a fact. I'm not. I'm no. I'm no soldier. It, you know how you know I'm not a soldier because if I was, then we, there'd be like a foreign flag flying over our country. There's no way an army of people like me would be able to protect us against anything. You could be on the drones. I, I could. Yeah. Oh, like a video game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh. But the um. The the idea of like you got to shoot shoot for the head. That that would probably be hard even for the most skilled soldier because I think they're taught to aim for center, center mass. mass. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I would imagine that would be just an extreme exercise in futility for a lot of them. They would have to reteach themselves. Well, these undead zombies, you can decapitate them and, yeah. they, and they're still biting. Even in 28 days? Not in 28 days. Not in 28 days. days. Okay. Yeah. Days, you, you, can, you can kill them normal cell. But, yeah. but they're, they have a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> it, and uh they they don't eat brains they, no. they're, they're the other kind of zombies that that just go for flesh okay and, I, uh, it I, seems I, like they have an unlimited amount of energy and it seems like they will just <laughs> race and follow you Sorry. it seems like they will just race and follow you until one of you is no more uh, are you thinking of uh, that scene uh the boat scene 28 weeks later this where they're following like a flock of birds as he's running to get to a boat. To the boat yeah. yeah. And they, yeah, yeah. they're changing course. Mm -hmm. That was that, that, that scene was amazing for, for several reasons. One was the realization that it was daytime. It was daytime. Yeah. They're, they're having spaghetti. They're sitting around candles. Yeah. 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 Everything was peaceful. Uh, he, and how quickly it goes to hell. And, and, and he just abandoned his wife. And, yeah. 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 That, that whole scene was, it, it changed the entire course of the whole movie. And, uh, yeah. It's another movie that's that's done really well. It, it's not just a, a, a gory, scary movie. It's it's actually a movie. I, I could have done without seeing uh, Killian Murphy's crotch, but <laughs> silly Killian. Silly? Killian. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I hope it's Killian. I don't know. Um, <laughs> silly, but... You could be right. Well, uh, yeah. Probably wrong. Yeah. I usually am. I read. I don't speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the difference. I don't. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he was. It was. I think it was a Danny Boyle movie. He had made a, a name for himself, or I don't know if it was before or after with the Slumdog Millionaire. Am I making that up? I don't know. Alrighty, I'll just I'll just say yes then. I'll just say that's yeah. true. I'm I'll not. Agree. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate. It. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but uh, I, I don't know if I think I think they were. I don't know if I don't know if Killian Cillian Murphy is returning to the franchise, but I think Danny Boyle is, and uh, I'm interested to see what the world uh, because it did look like the zombies were dying out so or or the rage infected uh, people were dying out so I'm, I'm wondering what maybe something gets re-released i don't know the uh, folly I'm, of man i'm really looking forward to it yeah yeah, yeah. we're talking about 28 months later 20 yeah uh yeah yeah, yeah. i think i think they settled on 28 years now oh 28 years yeah now. yeah what? i don't know if it's I, oh, I, I it can't have now. been 28 years i, I don't think it's even been it's 20 28. I, I want it to be 28 months because yeah. I don't want it to be 28 years already. You know? oddly, oddly enough, 28 months is how long I was in the womb. Yeah. Like an elephant. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was uh, a medical anomaly. I'm I'm in uh, uh, doctor's uh, med medical books, medical charts. <laughs> I'm making that up. Uh, all right. What's your, what, you want to go with your number one? You want me to go with my number one? Uh, well, you're the host. So oh, I was going to say you're the guest. So, you're, you're, well, you're the co-host. All right, I'll go. I I have to, and this is less about. What if we have the same? 
Oh, that's, I'm wondering. I actually, I'm wondering. I, th- this is less about um, paying respects, but more about really like it's it's just it's a solid movie that holds up. And I'm gonna go with Night of the Living Dead, the original. I, I it just it truly does hold up for so many reasons. I mean, uh, I, again, sixty eight. I believe sixty eight is the it, it, it is the right okay, and and you're looking at a time where if you're going to see a movie, it's uh, other than maybe a Sydney Poitier movie, it's it's going to have a white lead in it, and here you have um, a black lead in a nineteen sixty eight film, a horror film, and on top of that, I, I believe if I'm recalling correctly, uh, it it was originally wit- written for. Uh, an actor who was white who then didn't star in the movie and they didn't rewrite the movie at all and i i they just kept the black lead which at the time and, and this 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 i think set the trend for zombie films to have brilliant social commentary and at the end and again like uh, it's been 40 something years uh, i could spoil this at the end he, uh, our lead is taken out essentially by a mob uh, and I'm, I'm wondering if uh, I, I I don't know if that was the original end of the movie or it became the end of the movie when the black lead was hired. But it's a brilliant film. Uh, it spoke a lot to what was going on in the 60s at the time. The, the uh, idea of it being filmed on a sho- shoestring budget. And it's still to this day uh, is as scary as ever. I mean, I still say. They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, like yes, yes. I, I, it's it's still a scary as hell movie, uh, and it's been decades, and uh, and for that re- reason, and for its kind of just social and and commentary and its influence on the genre, uh, I, it's it's my number one. I think it totally feels organic. It does. It, it does. It, does. it t- absolutely feels like I don't know if it is or not. I, I didn't know that there was a chance that it might not have been. Um, I, from what I remember, the scene yeah. seems perfect i i do think that there were like uh there was more to the story and essentially the, that more to the story became day of the dead became dawn right, of the right, dead right, um right. so uh i mean we we got it whatever wasn't presented in the original we got right the the, the, the one scene other than they're coming to get you Barbara, was a little girl oh i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> yes, a little girl with, I knew. A, with, a, with a little trowel yeah and going back to the whole little kids are creepy yes, man yes they are I mean, she's wearing a nice little little like day dress. Yeah, and, right. Yes. Just uh, uh, blood. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Creepy as heck. I, I, she's, on her chin. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, Chocolate syrup on her chin, I should say. Right. Probably. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not sure what they use, but I'm, it's got to be it. I think Black and white movies. Yeah, I think they use her chin. It, it looked it looked great. Hershey's the choice for blood. Uh, I, I do. It just looked great on film. I think Psycho was the same thing, right? Yes, With, it was. Yeah. It was uh, is that so? What's your number one? My number one is it, it could be a little bit controversial. Uh, it's Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Are we talking about Evil Dead? Like Evil Dead, to, uh, Sam Raimi, 19, God, 80, what, two, 84? Oh, yeah. I, yes, that's the one. Is it 82? Uh, wow. I, mean, I don't know what year, but yeah, yeah, Bruce Campbell. If I, if I got that, uh, you know, and they're still talking about that. They're still, I know Evil Dead Rise, Rises or Rachel? Rise. Another good movie. I haven't actually. Another I, good you know what? I got to tell you, I, uh, my sensibility has changed a little bit as I got older. I swore up and down. I remember walking around as a kid with an Evil Dead Two shirt on, um, and then of course uh, Army of Darkness. I tried to watch Ash versus the Evil Dead. Tried to get into that. I, I watched it. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I think it's on Netflix. I should watch it. Yeah. Uh, I canceled, but it was fun. Uh, then they had the remake, which. Featured a tiny little bit of Bruce at the end. Yes. Groovy. Loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it all. Uh, was he in Rise? I, I didn't see Rise. He was not in Rise. Yeah. No, he was not in Rise. But uh, the thing that makes it controversial is the fact that they're not really zombies. They're possessed. They're, they're, uh, they're deadites. Deadites. They're deadites. deadites. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but what makes a zombie? Is it an outbreak? Is it coming back from the dead? Uh, is, is, it's it, a good is question. Is it a legend? Uh, that th- it, it depends on on what makes a zombie a zombie. These guys are possessed by by whatever, the Necronomicon. Uh, the Necronomicon. So uh, that's my number one. That's that's that is a a, a, a a unique choice for number one. Yeah. Uh, n- very unconventional. 
uh, Sam Raimi, uh, 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 trying to think, uh, Bruce Campbell. I, I'm not sure who else uh, of note uh, was in the film. Uh, I'm going to guess Sam Raimi's brother, Ted. He's, uh, he's in anything. But that's, that's, that's a good choice. It's, uh, you're right. I mean, what, what really makes a zombie, I, I, I do enjoy that in most zombie movies or literature, they never quite tell you what, uh, what is causing it. I mean, it like it depends it, on the universe. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 28 days later, 28 weeks. It's the, it's the infection. Um, I, I'm not sure if the walking dead, uh, has never, ever explained, never. at least not, at least not in the, I'm not sure in the comic books. I think in the comic books they went with maybe aliens or something like that. But um, and I don't think in the series they did, uh, or at least I, I haven't been following the uh, TV series in a long time. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, what? And who cares, really? At the end of the day, like right, yeah, I always say that. Like what uh, we were talk- when we were talking about Dead Snow, like who who cares why? Who cares the why? Just enjoy what you're seeing. Uh, you could waste time writing your thesis on how the infection happened, or you could say in one sentence, you know, Shaun of the Dead did a clever job of that, where they kind of, the, the news clip toward the end of the movie spliced several different news clips together to give some kind of uh, rationalization. And I think in that movie too, they blame a comet or something like that. Um, but, you know, who cares? I think Shaun of the Dead is a, the end of Shaun of the Dead is how most zombie outbreaks would end. We would just have them all as pets. Uh mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As, as long as they're the slow moving zombies, I'm right. sure we would just chain them up and, uh, and use them for, for stupid labor. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, maybe zombie unions, you know, <laughs> come out of that. Uh, zombie the, chain games. Yeah. The zombie defense league. It, it would break rocks and stuff. You know? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. That would, Land of the Dead would probably go that route. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you could do with the zombie movies. Uh, is there anything that didn't make your top five that you were kind of like wishy-washy on? Like, ah, uh, you know, this should be on, but I'm not sure if I could. Uh, I, I, you chose a higher. Uh, de- Planet dead. Terror. Jeffrey Planet made Terror. It. Reanimator made it. Oh, with Jeffrey Combs. Yeah. I do like Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, I think that's it. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I, I, I. Bro, is it? Yeah, Bride of the Reanimator. Is that a movie or am I making that up? Um, I would enjoy, I, I I mean, God, it's going on like, it's got to be going on 40 years. And is that right? Yeah. It's got to be going on like 40 oh, yeah, years. Yeah, easily. He was in the 80s. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I still, I wouldn't mind seeing more Evil Dead with Bruce Campbell. Anything Bruce Campbell does as part of that genre, I am absolutely going to be a part of. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He's fun. He's, he is, yeah, he's fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you know what? I, I, and again, like that whole dead snow mentality, just embrace the absurdity. I mean, he, he, Evil Dead absolutely did that. And, and the no frills gave, gives it so much more charm. Yeah, the, the fact that it was it was put together and it clearly costs as close to nothing as possible. Right, and it's still so well put together. They don't take themselves too seriously. No, but, but they made they put it together seriously enough for it to be a wonderful movie, even though. They're not taking themselves seriously with no budget. And, and even when they had the budget, we even went like, I, I mean, Other by their standards, yeah. like Evil Dead 2 is essentially like, it feels like Evil Dead 1 with a budget. And then Army of Darkness is just, almost like, yeah, yeah, it feels like a completely different franchise. Uh, you really did not, uh, I mean, you could have uh, seen Evil Dead 1 or 2 to enjoy Army of Darkness, but I, don't, I really don't think it was a prerequisite. Uh, prerequisite. You could have just enjoyed it as its own. I don't think I would be such a Bruce Campbell fan if it wasn't for Army of Darkness. Though. Yeah, all right, and that's fair. The whole boomstick. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean it's it's extremely quotable. Yeah, yeah, yeah the fact, yeah, yeah extremely. Yeah. Give me some sugar, baby. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> that's how I learned how to flirt. Uh, 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 Daddy wants. Uh, <laughs> give me some sugar, right? right. Um, that's just, that's just pillow talk, baby. You know, <laughs> that's that's uh, that's how I learned how to flirt, which is why I'm so bad at it, but. Uh, the boomstick lines and uh, shop smart, shop shop smart. As smart. Uh, a great movie. I, I I did see the Evil Dead remake. I forget who starred in it. It was a female lead, uh, and again, done very well. It was it was good. It was enjoyable. I, I didn't see Rise, but you you enjoyed Rise. I did enjoy Rise. Yeah, I did. So are we are we counting that as the franchise as you did with Twenty Eight Days? 
movies or are we talking about Evil Dead on its own? You know what? To be fair, to be I'm fair, I'm not going to say the Evil Dead franchise. I'm just going to say Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell? Yeah. Uh, Even though he's not the zombie. <laughs> I, I will. I'm just going to come right out and say Bruce Campbell. Number I, one. I, I can't lie. I tried to give it a shot. I could not enjoy uh, Bubba Hotep. Mm. I tried. I tried. You know what? I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It was a yeah. bit much. Yeah. Uh, too much. It, 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 I don't know. Schlock is the right word. But, it, it, you know. I was told you have to be a real fan to appreciate it. And apparently, I'm also not a real fan. Yeah, that's fair then. I guess yeah. I'm not a real fan. If uh, Sorry, you know, to Bruce Campbell fans worldwide. But uh, yeah, I can't. I can't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't I think, do it. I think I'm, I think I would just might be a casual at best if that's the case. That's fair. He's still going to be my number one. I did read his book. At least I think it was his first book, uh, Confessions. Mm-hmm. If chins can kill, if chins can kill, which was really good. That was I think it was if chins can kill, Confessions of a B oh, movie stuff. Yeah, like yeah, something like B movies. Yeah, yeah, something in that vein. I can't remember. Uh, but it was fun. It was a good book. I wish I, I over the years I probably lent it out, and never got it back, but. Uh, he's got a few books out there, all enjoyable. Um, all right, yeah, that was cool. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. I had a good time doing that. Me too. I think the introduction of um, an adult beverage was nice. I should do that more often. Yeah. Did you edit out my pee break? Not yet. I will though. All right. <laughs> but if you're watching this and you heard him ask <laughs> if I edited out his pee break and you didn't hear or know about a pee break, the answer is yes, I did. Edit out the pee break. Guys, I'm Tom Tormey. I'm Q. And this was Nerds Night Out, and we were talking zombies. I hope you had as much fun as we did, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good night more. <laughs> I went up to that good night. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb, so let's let's move on to well, number four then. I, I told you that I didn't see one of them, but I have- <laughs> I mean, well, you didn't see Fido, so all right, I don't have to go out on a limb at all. I haven't told you my number five. Okay, oh, go ahead. I apologize. Go ahead. Well, hit me with you. Hit me with your five. Well, you done? I, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I'm. Just, a, uh, I just wanted to know what order we were doing this. No, no, no. We this this is this is a make your own rules kind of thing. All right. Yeah. Well, my number five is Land of the Dead. Oh, Land of the Oh, I mentioned Land of the Dead just yeah, moments ago. Yeah. yeah. I, I do like that. Uh, I would pretty much say anything in the universe of George A. Romero zombies. And, uh, but of yeah. them all, uh, I, I have to say that that's my favorite. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. What, what, what do you like? What do you like the oh, most boy. about? It? Oh boy. The, the cast, uh, running zombies, uh, uh that, uh, John Leguizamo was really good. Uh, Dennis Hopper, Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. You can always count on him for a good horror movie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two, uh, Land of the Dead. He, he he delivers. He's he's a little over the top. Uh, whenever you need a gritty, gritty mm. American, Dennis Hopper can't go wrong. No, no, never, never. Uh, uh, one of my favorite performances is in a, is in a movie, uh, 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 True Romance. No, I've never seen it. that's the that's the Brad Pitt. Uh, yes, yes. Really, really, uh, every, everybody's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the Tarantino wrote that. Yes. Yeah. We'll